Hi everyone, I'm John Schneider with Fargo 3D Printing here at CES 2016 and we are sitting down with Jonathan, the CEO of MakerBot. Uh, MakerBot is one of the leaders of 3D printing right now, so I know that there are a lot of people that have, you know, that are, that are curious on how things are going over at MakerBot. So Jonathan, I'm just going to hand that over to you. Just tell me a little bit about, uh, about 2015, how that went and, and where you see things going in 2016. So, John, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for this interview, and I'm excited to talk to your audience. Uh, 2015 was a challenging year for the industry as a whole. Uh, a lot of things happened in the industry, um, and also at MakerBot, uh, leadership changes with my onboarding, um, an industry, basically an industry, I would say an industry dehyping, uh, led by two main waves that aren't yet ripe for market, I would say. One is the rapid manufacturing space on the high end. There was There is traction there, but not at, to the excess that we were hoping for. And also in the consumer space, where uh, definitely there is a value prop proposition for 3D printing on the consumer space, but we're not seeing the traction that we were hoping for as well. And I think those two things sort of impacted the industry as a whole in 2015. And uh, so we walked in, so I walked into the role in 2015 with a lot of challenges uh, uh, to, to, ha to, take, to cope with. Uh, ultimately, the question I kept asking myself is, are we doing the right things in this year to, be, to walk out stronger from that challenge than we did when we walked into that, into these challenging times? Um, and absolutely, I think, I think we did a lot of good things, a lot of necessary things, some of which were very painful. Like, for instance, the layoffs that we had to go through, that is not something fun. It's definitely not something we're uh, proud of, but it's something that needed to happen from a financial standpoint. But we did all the all very, very important things in 2015 that bring us strong into 2016. So I'm definitely excited about that. I'm really proud about the Smart Extruder Plus launch. I'm, I love the fact that it was on the first working day of 2016. I love the fact that on that very first day of the year, we launched such an important product. Uh, and and we can talk a lot about that if you want, but I'm yeah, just I'm actually, just well while we're on it, yeah. Let's. So I know that there were uh, with the the very first iteration of the smart extruder, there were challenges with that, um, and I know that the new smart extruder plus addresses many. I mean, pretty much every issue that we ran into with the smart extruder. So right. I mean, just talk a little bit about what you learned from that per, that first iteration of the smart extruder and how the new smart extruder plus is is really changing some of that. Right. So. So I, I think it's fair to say that there's a lot. There were a lot of uh, a lot of developments that took place prior to Smart Extruder Plus that really improved the performance of the Smart Extruders. But the Smart Extruder Plus is, is, is sort of in a league of its own because of the efforts, both mainly on the hardware and also on the testing phase of it, to really sort of bring to market a product that is solidly reliable, like 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 to, you know to the points that we have never experienced before. I mean. We doubled the warranty of the Smart Extruder Plus because we feel so confident with this product. We did testing uh, over like close to 200,000 hours of print, 18 years of printing time. Uh, the Smart Extruder themselves last for over 700 hours, some over 1,200 hours. That's 1.44 miles of filament per extruder. Uh, so we're really confident about, about the, the, the changes we did to the Smart Extruder. Um, we're really excited about that. We're also offering it to our customer base at $99 a piece. And uh, for our uh, other audience out there, it's the it's $199 a Smart Extruder Plus. Uh, so just really confident about the product overall. One of the most interesting things about this product from my perspective coming from Stratasys into MakerBot is the strong collaboration between Stratasys and MakerBot for this product. So the QA took place both in Brooklyn and in Minneapolis. So there were two teams set up to really uh, ensure that the quality is aligned with expectations. So we had two separate teams. They were siloed. They can't really talk to one another. They report to different uh, directors, different managers, and then those relay the information over to, to us at Brooklyn. And so the, the rationale behind that is you want to make sure that you're doing everything right, that the reliability is, is aligned with expectations, and that's exactly what we did. And so we're super proud to, to launch this product uh, on the first day of 2016, which hopefully, to me at least, is a really great, like, you know, that's a great way to start the year. So I'm really excited about about where we're heading. A lot of good things further are going to come up in 2016, so we're excited. 
Right. So last year at this time, there were some other things announced, uh, some some different composite materials. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that as part of MakerBot changing over this last year, just curious as to the status of those, if that's something that's still on the horizon or if the timelines changed for, for some of that stuff. Yeah, so timelines have changed. Uh, we were expecting to bring uh, those products to market earlier uh, uh, earlier than, it, it, than, than foreseen now. Um, it's, it's, it's taking longer than we expected. And some, we're struggling with some of those, um, we're struggling with some of those smart, uh, uh, sorry, um, composite materials. Um, yeah, it's, we were, we announced it as a pre-release and uh, we're struggling with the release part of it. Gotcha. Uh, so changing, uh, changing gears a little bit, MakerBot is very popular in the education market. Right. Over this last year, things like MakerBot in the classroom have been, I think it's been really instrumental in helping teachers get a better handle on what 3D printing can do in the classroom. What sort of other initiatives does MakerBot have right now for, for the educational type of customer? So a lot of really interesting things are going to come out this year addressing that, that market space. And specifically, I would say more on the ecosystem side of things. Okay. Uh, so the challenges that we launched, for instance. So the, 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 value, the, the value that we bring to the equation is also the ecosystem, the software, the community part of it, right? Because you got, you know, you got Thing, uh, Thingiverse and Thingiversity, uh, and you can leverage off Thingiverse to create a platform of best practices for teachers. So you could have part of Thingiversity approach is you'd have that format, you'd have that template. It's not curriculum, you have to be careful, it's, it's best practices. But you could have a teacher, a math teacher in, I don't know, Australia for fourth grade students pitching how he or she used a certain model for her classroom. And then someone sit over in Utah, use that file, download that, you know, download that file, use that file, and then upload a file that, that she used or he used in biology for sixth grade students. And so when you have a community uh, that is basically, you know, the, the largest in this industry, um, which obviously is uh, Thingiverse. We're talking about 2 million uh, users on Thingiverse. Uh, we're talking about a million uh, downloadable files. We're talking about uh, 500 million downloads since inception. Half a billion files were downloaded since inception on Thingiverse. So massive traction happening there. So if you can tap into that community, address the EDU space through that community, teachers and, and students alike, uh, then, then you'll get a lot of great things uh, come out from that. And that's definitely things that we're going to work on in 2016. And more things as well uh, for you to find out as time goes by. Okay. A nice little teaser for that. Uh, so have you had much of a chance to walk the floor at CES yet? You know, I, 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 uh, I landed last night. I've been in meetings all day. Right after this meeting, I'm going to go and see uh, what's going on downstairs. Okay, very cool. Well, we'll have to get back in touch and see what you uh, see what you think of what some of the other sure. 3D printing companies are uh, are showing off. Sure. Uh, I mean, I guess anything else that you'd like to cover before before we wrap this up? Um, no, yeah, I think I, 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 I again, you know, I know it's. Um, 2015, uh, we, we had to restructure ourselves. We had to redefine ourselves. We had to, uh, we did a lot of changes, uh, but we really worked hard in 2015 to, to get our, uh, to get ourselves well positioned for 2016. And again, the smart extruder plus the issue on the, the you know, the, 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 the product and just how solid that product is. Uh, is is a great is a great way for us to start the year, and we're just super excited about about the things to come. A lot of more uh, releases will come out uh, throughout uh, in the coming in the coming time, and just really excited about about doing all of that and, and working in the right direction. So we're, we're razor focused on the mission at hand. For us, it's all about product. It's all about uh, satisfying customer needs, and we're working on those uh, on those uh, fronts very very adamantly, and we're excited. Well, that's all. It's really good to hear. So I want to thank you for your time sure. and for this interview. Thank you. Uh, hopefully you get some time to go and check out the rest of CES, not just 3D printing, but there's a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, doing that right now. Just literally yeah. landed last night and been with meetings back and forth all day. So I'm doing that right now. All right, perfect. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, thanks, thanks. thanks.